Hello viewers, welcome to K-Diagnostics, Dio here. Today we have a 2001 Volvo S60 with a 2.3 liter. Some of you might recognize this vehicle. I did work on this car about three weeks ago. I fixed the driver's side window, which wasn't going up and down. But this car is back in the shop and it's back with a different issue. The customer complaint is that the cooling fan remains on, okay? So the driver stated that about two days ago, he went to his car in the morning to start it. He couldn't start it, the car was dead. The battery was completely dead. He had someone jump start it for him. It started, everything was fine. And during the day, he realized that the cooling fan was staying on all the time. So basically what's happening, the cooling fan stays on until it kills the battery, okay? I did scan it off camera to see if we had any trouble codes in memory, but there are, there are no codes in memory and no lights on the dash. So knowing how electric cooling fan works, there is a sensor on the engine called a ECTS or engine coolant temperature sensor. That sensor senses the temperature of the engine and then it sends a signal to the computer, the engine computer, to tell to tell it what the actual engine temperature is and once the computer gets that signal it then turns on the cooling fan so I mean I haven't looked at this wiring diagram I haven't looked at anything yet just based on how most of these systems work uh, if a engine coolant temperature sensor is bad it can trigger uh, it can send a wrong signal to the computer which can cause the fan to remain on all the time okay so what we're gonna do is we're gonna confirm the customers complaint first I want to show you what the customer is experiencing I mean once I start the car the fan turns on and even when I turn it off the fan stays on until the battery dies right now I had to disconnect the cooling fan so that I can have it off because otherwise you guys couldn't even hear me it's so loud Okay, so I'm gonna grab a scanner and we're gonna graph the uh, engine coolant temperature sensor PID. We're gonna see what the actual uh, temperature of the engine is and versus the uh, signal that's going to the computer versus what the sensor is telling the computer. If there's any discrepancy, we will know that our issue is just a sensor. Hopefully it is as easy as just the sensor. But if the sensor is good, we're going to do more digging to find out what's causing this. So I'm going to start the car so we can confirm the customer's complaint. So I'll bring you guys here in the engine bay so we can confirm the customer's complaint first. And then we'll see what directions we can go to fix this. Uh, we're going to confirm the customer's complaint. Like I said earlier, I did disconnect this electrical connector for the fan control module because this red wire is the power supply to the module and the black wire is the ground supply wire and if you look closely there that's the fan module okay this fan module controls the cooling fan and if you look closely here to the left there is a third wire this is the signal wire I believe this wire comes from the computer this is the signal that tells that module to turn on the fan I believe we're dealing with a shorted module but we're gonna test it first before we condemn it, right? I had to disconnect this because with this electrical connector being connected, the fan would remain on. And this fan here is really loud. So I'm gonna connect it back up so we can confirm the complaint. Once I connect it, the fan should come on. Let me see if I can do this one-handed. Hopefully I can. As you guys can hear the fan is on and this engine has been sitting here for about 30 minutes now and the engine is I mean and the fan is still being energized so something is wrong now it could be that let me connect this very well so something is wrong the next easy thing I want to do is disconnecting this control wire okay the signal wire that tells the fan module what to do so I'm gonna disconnect it and see if our fan is gonna remain on I can't
can't do this one handed, so let me see what I can do here. Alright, so right there. Alright, so as you guys can see, the third wire has been disconnected, which is the signal wire coming from the computer. This tells me that we most likely have a shorted fan control module because if we had a defective coolant temperature sensor because think about it the sensor sends a signal to the computer and then the computer controls the fan by this wire right here okay so if the signal is being constant on this wire the fan would be on all the time but after disconnecting this if the issue wasn't uh, on the control module itself I mean the fan module if the issue was either the computer or the sensor by disconnecting this wire the fan should have stopped running but as you can see our fan is still running but only when we disconnect the main power and ground to the module that guy right there I hope you guys can see him that thing that's the module right there only when we disconnect the main power and main ground to the module and then our fan stops so this tells me that we have a shorted fan module I don't even have to look at the uh, uh, engine coolant temperature sensor field on the scanner because the next step I was gonna do was gonna be finding the coolant temperature sensor and then disconnecting it because basically what we did we just ruled out the computer and the coolant temperature sensor by disconnecting this one wire if some of you still have doubts I will do that for you okay let me just disconnect this main electrical connector here just to stop this cooling fan noise all right so right there that's off so I have my scan tool connected to the car actually I don't have to do this because by disconnecting the third wire on the coolant fan control module uh, that kind of pretty much uh, rules out the sensor and the computer because the computer uses that wire to tell the module to turn on the fan but I'm just gonna show you the engine coolant temperature sensor data PID just to prove my point so right now the engine coolant temperature sensor is reporting 146.75 degree Fahrenheit to the engine computer okay so and this actually looks pretty accurate because based on the temperature okay the engine is still a little bit hot and this looks pretty accurate so now what I want to do is find the engine coolant temperature sensor and disconnect it right now we're reading engine temperature I mean I, just, I drove it it's fairly hot right now so once I disconnect the engine coolant temperature sensor this reading here should drop with the sensor disconnected we should read very cold uh, temperature or it should read around uh, minus uh, 30 or 30 degree Fahrenheit with the sensor disconnected so let's locate the sensor and disconnect it I believe if I'm not mistaken the sensor lives around this thermostat housing and here is the electrical connector for the sensor the sensor is right here let me see if I can give you a better shot of the sensor so that's the engine coolant temperature sensor right there I hope you can see it so here is its connector so I'm going to disconnect it now I can't do this one-handed so I'm gonna disconnect this connector so right now our reading on the scan tool should drop and right there as you guys saw we dropped down to minus 54 okay so hopefully you guys can see this so we dropped to minus 54 so we're reading really really cold right now and that's pretty much a rule of thumb with these uh, thermistors uh, once you disconnect them they read cold very cold temperatures so this tells me that our sensor is most likely working and the wiring to the sensor is also good now with the sensor disconnected as you can see we're reading uh, extremely cold right now we're reading minus 54.39 degree Fahrenheit I'm going to reconnect the uh, fan 
since we are getting a cold signal right now at the computer, the fan shouldn't turn on. So now let's connect the fan back on. I still have this third wire disconnected, so I'm going to connect this main electrical connector. And as you can see, with the main electrical connector connected, now my fan is still running. Okay? So, what do you guys think? Alright, so as you guys can see, once I connect the main electrical connector for the uh, cooling fan control module, the fan runs. The sensor is disconnected. The third wire that controls the coolant fan control module is also disconnected, but the fan is running. So this tells me that the cooling fan control module is shorted. And as we see here on the scanner, with the sensor being disconnected, we're supposed to read a very cold uh, signal. And as you can see, that's what's happening. We are reading minus 54.39 degree Fahrenheit. So this tells me that the wiring is good, the sensor is good. So what do you guys think the issue is? The issue is the fan control module itself. Okay, I hope this makes sense. I'm going to pull up the wiring diagram so we can look at it one more time. And uh, it's a very simple circuit. It's got a couple of wires. I will pull up the wiring diagram. Hopefully by looking at the wiring diagram, it will make more sense if uh, your car, you still have a couple questions. But let's look at the wiring diagram and make this fi final call together. All right, so right here, uh, it's a one page uh, wiring diagram. So we have a red wire here, and there's a fuse, a six amp fuse, and this fuse has got power all the time. It says hot at all times, which means with the key on or key off, there's always power here. And so there's this red wire, this heavy gauge wire, and then there's another black wire here. And these two wires are on that main connector that I was disconnecting to disable the fan, okay? So this wire supplies power to the fan control module. And then this one is a constant ground. It supplies ground to the fan control module, okay? By disconnecting these two, we were able to turn off the fan. This module here, uh, it says engine cooling fan control module front center of the engine compartment. So this is on the fan housing. This is the module that controls the fan motor itself. As you can see, this is the fan motor, electric cooling fan motor. And these two wires coming from the motor go to this module right here. There's a black wire and a white wire. So the power on the ground to the motor come from the module the fan module. The module supplies power and ground to the motor and then the motor turns. Okay, It's a very simple circuit. So there's power and ground to the module and then there's this third wire. This is the signal wire. Remember when we disconnected it nothing happened. Okay, If we follow it, if we follow it across it goes to the engine computer. This one is the ECM. If we scroll down what does it say here? It says engine control module ECM, right side of engine compartment. So this is the engine computer. So basically, uh, back here, uh, down here, I should say, we have a engine temperature sensor, you know, or coolant temperature sensor. And here we have the AC pressure sensor. So this is, I guess, another input for this uh, circuit you know it's a one of the input to the engine computer to turn on the fan so we have the motor here the engine temperature sensor here and the AC pressure sensor okay so the engine temperature sensor senses the temperature of the engine and then sends that information to the computer and then the computer turns on tells well basically the computer tells this module to turn on the fan motor, okay? So by disconnecting one of the input, which is the engine coolant temperature sensor, by disconnecting this, once we disconnected it, the computer actually interprets a 
and open here because once you disconnect it you open it you open the circuit it so it interprets it as a cold temperature we saw on the scanner with the sensor being disconnected it was reading about minus uh, 54 degree Fahrenheit okay so I believe this module here the fan module is shorted because when we disconnect the main power and the main ground to the module the fan stops working if the module was working fine by disconnecting just the sensor the fan should stop working or by disconnecting the signal wire this third wire here this violet wire because this is the control this is what tells this module to turn on the fan by disconnecting this wire the motor here should have stopped working as well okay but that didn't happen so this tells me that the module here is shorted. Does that make sense? So now I am going to remove the fan because the module is part of the fan. I'm going to remove it and then I will get another fan. Uh, I'm going to order one. A new one is expensive. I'm going to get one from a junkyard. I will get a, a fan assembly because you have to get the whole assembly to get this module. So I'll get a fan assembly from a junkyard. And once I get it, I'll bring you guys back up so we can install it and see what happens. So I believe by installing another uh, fan assembly, which is going to include the motor and this module right here, this vehicle should be fixed. So the issue here is a shorted engine cooling fan control module. All right, guys, so we are back here at the engine bay. I did receive the cooling fan assembly from the junkyard. And this is the fan motor, and this guy is the cooling fan control module. This module controls this motor here. Like we saw on the wiring diagram, well, there's basically two uh, heavy gauge wires. So this is the power supply wire, and this is the ground supply wire. So this red wire and black wire, so there's constant power here and constant ground on this wire. And then this tiny uh, violet wire is the control wire that comes from the computer. So there's power and ground on these two. When the computer sends a signal, okay, the module receives a signal from the engine computer. And then it turns on this fan because the module controls the power and the ground to the motor. So the two wires we saw on the wiring diagram, the black wire and the white wire are right here. Okay, so the issue on the fan assembly here, on the old one, is this module. This module is shorted, okay, because once I disconnected this, which is this guy right here, the fan stopped working. But if I connect it back up, the fans run. Even with this third wire disconnected, the fan continues to run. The fan shouldn't run after you disconnect this okay so if we want to try an experiment before we actually connect this or before we install it since this wire is long enough I am going to connect this you see nothing's gonna happen see that now I'm connecting this okay the used fan we just got from the junkyard nothing is happening because it's not coming on Although there's power and ground here, it's not coming on because the signal wire is disconnected. Okay, But if we do the same thing on the fan assembly, which has the shorted module, which is still in place, we haven't removed it yet. So right here, this is the signal wire. Okay, the signal wire is disconnected, right? So now, let me connect this back up and you will hear the fan run do you hear it so shorted module no questions about it okay it's what we just did on this and this one didn't come on so the module is shorted so I'm gonna see you guys over there so we can remove this cooling fan assembly so basically to remove this cooling fan assembly uh, we already got the wiring disconnected 
So the next step is going to be removing this 10 millimeter bolt. There's one 10 millimeter bolt here, and then there's another one over here. Once we remove these two 10 millimeter bolts, the whole assembly should be able to come out. So I'll see you guys over there so I can remove this cooling fan assembly. This cooling fan is really uh, straightforward to remove. There isn't enough to it. Once you take those two 10 millimeter bolts out and after you disconnect the electrical connectors, I'm going to disconnect this uh, inlet tube just to make a little bit uh, room so that our cooling fan can come out easily. All right, so now the fan assembly is ready to come up. So here it is. The fan assembly is removed. All right, so I have both uh, fan assemblies here. This is the old one, and this is basically the new one, uh, new to us, but used one from the junkyard. This module here is shorted. That's what's causing the fan to remain on all the time. So like we looked in the uh, wiring diagram, there's the power and the ground on these two wires, constant power and ground, and then this third wire is a signal to the module. The computer uses this wire to tell this module to turn on the motor. So if I connect this electrical connector here, our fan should come on. Right there, as you can see, the fan is on, right? So, without even requiring a signal from this third wire, okay? That tells me that this module here is shorted. Now, let's try the same thing on this, on our used one. I guarantee you, if I just connect this, the fan is not going to come on. So we watch. See, it's connected. Okay. I have it connected to the harness and our fan is not coming on. It's actually uh, waiting for the signal on this wire to tell this module to turn on the motor. Okay. So defective fan module on the other one, the one on the bottom. All right. So let's get this out of the way. This is the defective one. Let's put this over here. Now, this is our used one that I'm going to install. Okay, so I'm gonna wipe it down a little bit, then we'll install this one.
All right, so the new cooling fan assembly has been installed. I connected all the wires, and I can already tell that this is fixed because before, with the defective one, with all the wires connected, the fan was on all the time. And right now, I mean, the temperature didn't really change. The fan is off, okay? So I'm gonna start the engine. We're gonna let it reach operating temperature. The fan is gonna kick on. And then we will turn it off to see if the fan is going to remain on or if it's going to go off right away. I mean, after turning off the engine. Uh, it may stay on, but usually the way this works is once the computer sends a signal to the fan module to turn it on, it stays on. Once the computer tells it to turn off the fan, the fan goes off, okay, based on the engine temperature. So let's start it and then turn it off to see if the fan is going to go off once or after we turn off the engine, which wasn't happening before actually. So I'm going to turn it on and let's see what happens. Alright, so the engine is running now and the fan is also running. I hope you guys can hear it. You guys probably won't be able to hear it because the engine is also running. Let me take you to the engine base so you can see. Alright, so right there, the fan is running. I hope you guys can see the fan running. Right there. You see this piece of paper? You see how it's been blown away? Okay. So the fan is running, right? So now I'm going to turn off the engine and let's see if this fan will continue to run or if it's gonna go off as soon as we turn off the engine. We have a little squeak there coming from the belt. So now I'm gonna go inside the car and turn it off. All right, so I turned off the engine. The fan is still running, but it should come off eventually. Alright, so I turned off the engine and as you guys can see, the fan is also off. It's quiet, everything is connected, our fan is off. So I'm going to leave this here. This is a fix. We made the right call. The vehicle is fixed. I hope you liked this video. If you do, give it a thumbs up. If you don't, give it a thumb down. But if you do, you got to tell me why. If this is your first time here, subscribe to my YouTube channel, K Diagnostics. While you are down there, ring the bell so you can get notified every time I upload a new video. If you have any comments, questions, criticism, leave them in the comment box. Thanks for watching guys. See you next time.